They tried to warn us. They tried to tell us that Epic Games would crush Fortnite just like they crushed Paragon. I still think Fortnite will be big this time next year, but I want to show you guys today why their philosophy and decision making has had some manipulative marketing, divided the community, and will keep Fortnite from staying relevant as long as it could. Fortnite completely revolutionized gaming. It brought family and friends together, it's legitimized the gaming industry, and it managed to partner with the music industry by having 10.7 million people watch the first virtual concert. Some of the top athletes in the world don't have sponsorships, and gamers like Ninja have signed with Red Bull and Adidas, a sports company. The game appealed to everyone, and it's the first video game some people have ever played because it's on every platform, it's casual and fun with crazy banana skins, tons of new weapons, and easy shooting mechanics. Plus, the building and editing gives it a higher skill gap for competitive players. But everything changed when Epic stopped listening to the community. In the past, they were super active on social media and Reddit to ask for feedback on the game. If the community, streamers, and top players were against some game-changing mechanic, Epic would be like, alright, you guys are right, we're stupid, we're sorry, we'll change it. For example, in the spray meta season 4 and 5, they tried nerfing building, but they way overdid it. So in patch 5.2, they gave buildings an extra 10 HP when built and reduced the damage, range, and mag size of the P90. There was also the double pump, pump damage being too low, that time explosive damage went through your builds to do damage, all kinds of crazy stuff that they tried out and changed because of negative feedback. They didn't have to, but they added countless skin suggestions from the community. I mean, these guys were really just interactive and involved, and it was really refreshing for a gaming company to pay that much attention to its players. And I think a big reason the game had so much growth early on is because of that, because of how much they listened. They were seen as great, innovative, and interactive before they did a full 180. I don't know when, but I went from waking up on patch day, excited to see what they put in the game, to wondering what they broke this time. The sword, the mechs, the turret trap, the turret trap buff, <laughs> making zombies the only way you could play the game, nerfing turbo build, removing the pump, adding planes, secret aim assist nerfs, it's insane! Now they have a habit of not listening to anyone once they've made up their minds on a change. There's a video called Death of a Game, Paragon, by NS, that shows this isn't a one-time thing. Epic has a pattern of simplifying the game and constantly changing core mechanics. When they shut down Paragon, the community was really upset, and its community director said this, After careful consideration and many internal debates, we feel there isn't a clear path to grow the game into something that retains players enough for it to be sustainable. This is after three months of alienating its crazy fan base down from 830,000 concurrent players to 177,000 by making constant game-changing updates that drove everyone away. New players couldn't keep up with all the crazy additions to the game and old players didn't even recognize what they're playing anymore. The goal with them is always the same, remove all the beautiful depth that makes the game rewarding and make it as simple and inviting as possible. The hope is to bring in new players, but it's always at the cost of the loyal ones. If you take a look at the games that have survived for the longest, CSGO, League of Legends, they always have a dedicated, supported, competitive system that makes players want to improve. Games like Overwatch struggle to balance the game at all levels because it is literally impossible for them. You can't just change over 30 heroes' abilities to fit each individual ranking, then have it change as they move up. So they opted to balance the game from pro players down, and they still have a huge fan base 18 seasons later. Fortnite doesn't even have that issue. They don't have to choose if they want to balance competitive modes or add in fun weapons. In fact, I'd argue that putting in a more competitive ranked mode would encourage good players to stick to arena, and let new players fight it out with each other, and have a better chance of winning normal games, which is exactly what Epic wants. Instead, they want the competitive side of Fortnite to suffer from a smaller skill gap too, it just doesn't make sense. Instead of creating a separate competitive loot pool, they force them to be the same. That means pro players are using low skill, uncounterable weapons like the Junk Rift and the Boombo against each other. They refuse to remove the Brutes from Arena. They made a game changing addition by putting a fucking sword in the game right before the Winter Royale. These guys have been training for the last year, and they completely changed the meta a few days before the tournament. This is part of the toxic, manipulative marketing I'll get to in a minute. They won't even make it a true ranked mode, where you can fall out of ranks if you don't perform well enough, like literally every other ranked mode. Any player can reach Champions Division just by hiding in a tree for the entirety of enough games. With just enough sheer willpower, you can get to champs. 
Epic could make all the changes they want to with regular matches and support an incredibly competitive game forever, so casual and competitive players are happy, and they're just too fucking stubborn to do it. They also have an issue of tending to overkill their nerfs and buffs. Look, I get it. The insane builds that players can do now are not anywhere close to what they must have imagined Fortnite being. They have a robot doing 90s that your dog could do faster. Good builders stomp on new guys and make them not want to play, which means there's less people for them to kill, so it's really just a short-term benefit. So I get it, they want to make the game appealing to new players, they want to nerf building and turtling and make it exciting. I mean, if you've ever fought someone or watched a streamer fight a guy that just hides in their boxes forever, it just gets so boring when they keep running and running and running away from you. But if you're on the other side, it's super frustrating to have players facing through all your builds, have nothing protect you, and build the way it should. So I agree, it's a really difficult issue to tackle. But instead of doing things one at a time, they double up on it to ruin the meta. They added mechs to the game to nerf building. And then they actually nerfed building. They nerfed how quickly you could build walls. It was just overkill and it wasn't until the community complained enough that they changed it back. Now. This is part of the toxic marketing that's something special I've seen with Epic Games. <laughs> Aside from the turbo build nerf, they've managed to work up the community with the mech being uncounterable and the sword becoming the dominant experience in the game at the time. Players got kind of sick of their shit and banded together to make the hashtags revert turbo build, remove the mech, and remove the sword at number one trending on Twitter. And this causes a few things, but all of them are exactly what Epic wants. First, if you haven't played Fortnite in a while, or ever, you'll see this and wonder what's new in the game. So you log in, you see some cool skins, some cool new weapons, and you get hooked on it again for a bit. Then, after a while, all the hype and the anger starts to dissipate, and Epic does what the community asks for. They change the game the way everyone asked, and it seems like they really do listen to the community for a minute. The whole point of these massive changes is to stir up controversy, get mentioned on social media, attract new players, and then seek praise for listening to the community. You may have listened to Nick Merckx talk about Epic, asked for a lot of the pros' opinions after a tournament. The players were all hyped up like, yeah, here's the feedback we have for the pro scene, we think a lot of this would make it a better game, like custom crosshairs, an FOV slider, weapon balances. Then, Fortnite turned around and did the exact opposite by removing the option to change your FOV, bringing in more spray weapons, and not adding custom crosshairs even a year later. No other competitive game outside Fortnite would think about screwing over its pros with massive game updates right before a tournament. But I guess when you're the biggest game in the world, you don't care if players don't want a new volcano and a sword right before their tournament. These issues go all the way inside the company, where employees are just as upset at how they're treated, which we can see from Glassdoor reviews. Glassdoor is a site that lets employees anonymously review their employers, so let's take a look at some of their comments. One employee says, They're horribly unorganized. We'll tell you one thing and it'll be another behind your back. Constantly changing proven procedures for no reason other than to do it. Sounds exactly how they treated pro players when they asked for feedback. Another one says, Favoritism's definitely a thing here. Anything you say that management doesn't like, get you let go instantly. Very reactionary to gaming news and events, doesn't plan in advance, always crunching. You can look at these all day, but the last one I want to point out says the CEO has lost control of the company. Epic has suffered as it's grown. The upper level management are far too corporate, they don't understand the video games business well. There's no loyalty in the company, employees are made to feel worthless as they watch their friends be laid off when things don't go well. Even though it's not always their fault. I think after the game dies out a bit and they get more competition, that they might get the hint and try to balance the game separately for competitive players. But I also think they'll burn out their best players by then, who will have moved on to something else after Epic has made them feel worthless too. Without building, there's almost no skill gap. The movement in the game's not very complex, and with Bloom, your aim isn't as important. I mean, even going back to June 21st of 2018, Epic's been trying to kill building all along. They made a post titled Counterplay and Playstyles that says, We strongly believe that the evolution of Fortnite supports a wide range of playstyles in Counterplay. Currently, the superiority of shotguns, rockets, and uncapped building are such a dominant playstyle in the final circle that most other strategies are being drowned out. Which is kind of crazy for them to say for a few reasons. One is without building, the game isn't as special. And if we look at the way the game is right now, mechs are completely the dominant experience, the dominant playstyle in the game, so they're not even listening to themselves. 
But it's not even like they have to choose who to make happy because they could make everyone happy if they wanted to. All they'd have to do is to make them balance separately. I hope they figure it out soon, man. It's one of the most unique games out there. Not often do you find a game that kills itself and loses its identity more and more every update. Except with Fortnite and Paragon. I just hope it's not too late.